a lot of questions about um, Governor Kemp's lifting of the shelter in place order. Um, but one of the things I wanted to make clear and um, and also make sure we kind of spread the word on is that there are still certain people um, who are subject to a shelter in place order until June 12th of 2020. Um, those folks are, are people that are 65 and older, people living in nursing homes or long-term care facilities. But there are also certain conditions that can subject one to the order as well, whether it's lung disease, asthma, heart disease, um, whether you're immunocompromised, um, you know, if you've had cancer treatment recently, um, people with diabetes, liver and kidney disease. Um, and then there's another category that I've had some questions about, which is the class three um, obesity or, or those with severe obesity. Um, folks have asked me, you know, how do I even know? And rightly so. I mean, it's not something you, know, you, you go around and say, oh, I'm a class class three obesity. Um, so one of the things is um, you can go to the CDC's website and the classification is based on what your BMI is. And the boss BMI, all it is is your body mass index. Um, and it's calculated um, based on your height and your weight. You can just enter it into um, the little calculator on the CDC website and they'll tell you what your BMI is. If you have a BMI of 40 or higher, um, then you are considered to be part of this kind of class three certification and it would make you, um, you know, subject to the shelter in place order um, through, uh, through June, through June 12th. So, um, you know, you may want to check that. It's probably a good idea for health purposes anyway. Um, but, you know, just check it because what we've seen is that those with BMIs of, of you know, 40 or higher um, are having much more difficult time with the, the illness, many more complications, and, um, and a lot more fatalities. So just really want you all to protect yourself. So if you'll go check it out, see if you're still subject to the order, that would be, um, that would be really good. Um, so some of the other conditions you might be saying, well, why are those listed as, you know, why, why does it matter if I have diabetes or, or, or the like with respect to this illness? Um, well, the state of Georgia hasn't really been reporting this information out, but the state of New York has. And one of the things they've been gathering is um, what are the types of conditions that folks with COVID-19 have that have resulted, you know, um, in fatalities. And they're called comorbid or comorbidities because they exist with um, kind of the main, you know, uh, disease process. For example, I have if I had COVID-19 and then I also had high blood pressure, it would be comorbid. Um, so these are a listing of the top 10 comorbid conditions um, that they have noted where people have eventually succumbed to the disease. And so that's why, um, you know, a lot of these, you know, conditions, you know, fall into the various categories in the shelter in place order um, that the governor has in place to continue until June 12th, because a lot of these conditions make people more vulnerable to the disease and more likely um, to have a serious kind of disease process and complications and or death. Um, so it's important to understand exactly what these conditions are um, so that, that you know, you know, in terms of your own risk analysis and what you do and going back to work and being around people and the like. And so I think it's important to kind of understand, um, you know, what are some of the higher risk groups and um, what are some of the conditions that kind of kind of put me in there? Because it's not just about being elderly, um, which is what we hear about a lot. Um, it really is kind of this other stuff too, um, including obesity and, um, you know, immunocompromised, all this this stuff. So just kind of pay attention um, so that you can protect yourself as much as possible. Another one of the big questions I've gotten has been about uh, church services and whether they can open back up. Well, the large gathering ban is still in place. So what is the large gathering ban? It just says that you can't have 10, uh, you can't have more than 10 people in one location at a time. And even then you have to be able to space them out six feet. Um, you know, I guess some churches could comply with the governor's order and be able to do that. Um, most can't um, and actually follow um, what's laid out here in terms of the ban. Um, you know, there are certain exceptions, of course, 
cohabitating, meaning your family members or, you know, and then there are certain rules with respect to dining rooms and restaurants. But, um, you know, I think it'd be very difficult for a church just to be kind of able just to open its doors open every Sunday again and, and welcome everybody back in. Um, you know, so from my perspective, from, you know, just kind of common sense or even kind of what the public health recommendations are, um, you know, I would just keep accessing sermons online, streaming and the like, um, you know, and, and kind of worshiping in that way um, just to keep yourself and others safe and also to comply honestly um, with the governor's order. So um, the last thing I want to talk about is really kind of the symptoms of COVID-19. You may ask why. Well, they're a little more expansive um, than we originally thought. We used to hear a lot about just coughing or shortness of breath. But the CDC has expanded these to some extent. Uh, you know, we've heard of fever before, but, you know, kind of sore throat, muscle pain, chills, um, you know, new loss of taste or smell. Uh, these are important to understand that you may have some of these and not have a cough or may not have shortness of breath. And um, you are still exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19. It's important because if you're a worker, you're not supposed to show up at work if you have symptoms. Um, it's important that if you have some of these symptoms, you shouldn't be going out because you may have the virus and you don't want to spread it. And you definitely don't want to get around people that are more vulnerable. Um, and then finally, it's important for purposes of getting tested. Right now, the state of Georgia is not offering tests for pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic um, individuals. Uh, but you can get a referral if you have symptoms of the virus. So um, if you are exhibiting symptoms and um, you want to get tested, you know, absolutely try to reach out um, you know, and get a referral so that you, you can get a test so you can make sure you know, not only protecting yourself, but you're protecting others. Um, and then with respect to mask, I know that a lot of folks don't necessarily like it, um, but it's one of the most important things we can do. It's not just about protecting you, it's really about protecting others. And especially if you think about the workers in the grocery stores that are making it possible for us to stay safe, um, wear a mask. I mean, it, it, the governor's saying to do it now, um, he's wearing a mask. It, it just makes good uh, public health sense. It just makes good sense. Um, we're all having to sacrifice here. We all want to just get back to, to some kind of normal. Um, but the only way to do that is really to, to, to slow or stop the spread of this, this disease and really to protect the most vulnerable around us. So um, stay safe, stay at home, go outside. It's beautiful. Um, and then if you go anywhere, make sure you wear a mask. So happy Monday, y'all.